Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with the man, myth, the legend, the lumberjack. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing awesome. It's been a lot of fun watching what the market's been doing the last few days because we know what this translates into in, in, the, in the real estate market. So Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so first, before we jump into the important topic, I want you to tell our audience about how cool Friday was. Friday was a big day for you and your yeah. family. Uh, you got to ring the bell. So tell us a little bit about that, and then we'll jump into this topic. Yeah, so Friday, my daughter finished her last treatment. She had 10 cycles of chemo. She then had 20 radiation treatments. Um, and so Friday was our last day of treatment, uh, or her last day of treatment uh, since uh, Labor Day weekend of 2021. And so we've been in quarantine since Labor Day weekend of 2021. So it's been a long, it's been a long year. Um, but yeah, so we were, we were, the staff there is amazing. They, um, we wanted to take the older kids to go with her because she gets to ring the bell when she finishes yeah. treatment. So she got to ring the bell and that was a lot of fun. And it was kind of funny because she was just like totally not into ringing the bell. And I was ah, like, ring whatever. that bell, honey. Yeah. yeah like, let's go. <laughs> like, whatever sounds good. Dude, I would be, I'd, I'd rip the bell off the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You and me both. Yeah, I know. It was like, don't worry. I'm a contractor. I can fix that. <laughs> yeah, I know a guy. I'll buy yeah, exactly. you a bigger bell. <laughs> so yeah, so it was, it was awesome. Thanks for asking. It was really cool. And then we got, so because we have been, um, because we've been on a quarantine for basically a year, right. the kids have not gone in anywhere, Yeah. anywhere. And so she finally, her white counts are getting back to where they need to be. Um, so we were actually able to go into the uh, Boston uh, oh, aquarium. nice. Yeah. So we took the kids to go to the aquarium. It was a lot of fun. They just, it was like they never had been in a place before. They loved it. And it was a blast. So yeah, exactly. Like, dad. And I was Hello. like, oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like seeing a kid excited. It's so, it's so awesome. So uh, congratulations. So fun. Thanks. I've been with you throughout this. So uh, it's uh, yeah. uh, nice to see it's now, you know, a bookend and you, we can move on to bigger <sighs> yeah. and better things. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Thank you. I appreciate cool. it. Cool. All right. Well, I can't transition, so I'll just transition. Uh, the uh, real estate market is uh, is about to do something that uh, we just need to talk about, right? The 30-year mortgage uh, now, last time I checked, was 6.18%. I had to go back and look when the last time the 30-year mortgage was over 6%. Near as I can tell, the last time it was Seven. over was 2008. Eight. Okay. 2008, yeah. which is, you know, we were both buying back then. We were, but uh, obviously at much lower prices, <laughs> just, a, just a scotch, yeah, just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit, but that's what I want to talk about. Right. Uh, you know, you know, my story, affordability is a big deal yeah. uh, and it's crashing. And by the way, if rates go up, it doesn't help affordability. It kind of takes it the other way. So what do you think is going to happen in the housing market? Cause this went up much faster than both of us expected. I don't think it's done going up, which really scares the hell out of me. What do, you, what do you think happens in the housing market? You've got affordability crashing. You've got true demand destruction, supply destruction. Where does this thing go? Because this is going to get interesting. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, we had both called five this year. I said five by June. Mm -hmm. I was right. Mm -hmm. um, I called six by the end of the year. I was late, but I'm early. But it came, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the question is, is now does it go to seven? Yeah. I yeah. caramba. Yeah, because because we're seeing we're seeing demand destruction certainly on the um, the move up buyer. We're not seeing it in the under median homes all too much. It's just basically decrease the number of offers, right. but it's not decrease the product moving. Yeah, um, that's what I'm seeing in my market is that still if you're coming on under median, you're gone pretty quick. Um, and then if, um, so that's on the, that's on the under median, the above stuff starting to set a little bit, but we're still talking about wish pricing. Yep. Um, talked about that in an interview that I just did with business insider about wish pricing and saying, listen, the last thing that sold, sold for 700,000, they're asking a million. If they sell, if they do a price drop to 900 and then they take 800, did they still make 15%? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They did. So I don't want to hear about all these massive price reductions. Talk to me when the realized price yeah. is lower than the last, even just the last realized price, not even at the beginning of the year where you actually yeah. track growth, but just the last raised price. So obviously what it's going to do is it's going to create that crash in transactions that we've been talking about. Um, even, even faster, I think. Fa oh yeah, much faster. 
Yep, much faster. Well, certainly for the for the move up buyer, they're out for now because it only makes sense to buy with that higher rate after true effective price reductions have been taken, i.e. lower than the last sale. Yeah. Um, that's the thing that people need to be watching is not lower than the last price or the price reduction. What they need to start looking at is lower than the last sale. That's what yep. people need to be tracking. Yeah. So I've been looking at the consumer forever and the consumer yeah. is an odd creature because they don't always do what you expect them to do. So I've been thinking about this, knowing that this was going to be topic one for us for a while. So, so here's the reality, right? Mm -hmm. I talked about about 60 days ago and was right about something I call the champagne cork, right? Yep. Once rates went from like three to four and a half, you were going to get this rush of buyers so they wouldn't miss something. Right. I believe that has now completed its cycle or whatever you call that. I'm sure that there's a word for it. I have no idea what the word for it is, but that yep. rush is over. Now, if, I'm not saying this is happening, but these are things I'm watching. If yep. the market, meaning the consumer, now thinks that 6.18 is a good rate because we will be at seven by Christmas. You might create another artificial rush. I am not calling for that currently because it's too early. Yeah. But if, if the talk track starts to get into the industry that, oh my God, we're going to be at seven next year, you will get another rush. And it will be very focused on the lower end, um, meaning below the median. But we, we could see a second rush, I think. If, if, if you believe rates will go to seven, yep. the 618 a good rate. I mean, yep. right? Yep, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is, is you have to see, it's like we've been saying, it doesn't go from here to here. Yeah. It's a gradual letdown. It's a stairway, it's a stairway down. Yeah. And so I think the biggest challenge is going to be now you're having to kind of more pinpoint what effective value is, which is if I'm paying 618, can I get a price adjusted house that sold for even what the last one sold for or under that, right? Mm -hmm. This is if you're trying to time the market, which we don't recommend. I don't recommend timing the market. I buy great deals all the time, regardless of rate. Same. 6, 16, 26, I don't care what the rate is. Show me what my return on my capital is. Show me what the yield is going to be. And I do that deal if it's a good or great, if it's a great deal. Absolutely. I'm not doing good deals anymore. I'm too obnoxious to do a good deal. I only will do great deals and fantastic deals, generational deals, decade deals. Yeah. That's all I'm looking at. And so the number of deals where I've actually updated people and said, bring me everything because I still want to see everything. Yeah. But I'm walking away from deals that are 10 and 12 points. I'm walking away from those deals because there's just not enough meat on the bone. And I only have so much capital. Exactly. This is the time. Again, I, I made that pivot about 90 days ago on the channel. We, yeah. All my investors, followers, I've dumped the word good, right? We did good deals the last two years. Sure. Because that was kind of what was there. That's all you could, even a good deal was really hard to find. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. Uh, we're throwing that away. I think the market's going to be, I think what is happening because rates are shooting up and yeah, they could go to seven. Who knows, right? Yep. I didn't think they'd be at 6-1 by freaking June 14th. I'd, that's only happened one other time in history in 81. Yeah, what's the, what's the Fed funds rate today, Mike? Today it's 0.75. Yeah. And mortgages are 6-1-8. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what I think is going on in the housing market. I think the crash in transactions that I've been calling actually accelerates. Everything seems to be happening faster. Faster. Agreed. Faster. Yep. 100%. So, so I, I think I was talking about a 25% fall this calendar year. It might be 35%. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it's that much fast. I think, I think owner ox continue uh, to go down. That's really where the pain is in transactions. Yep. Investors, um, cash buyers still buy. Yep. Right. That, you know, depending on what article you read, it's somewhere between 18 and 20 some odd percent still buy mm -hmm. uh, investors. I'm hoping they're still buying, but they're only doing great deals. We're fishing for motivated sellers, getting discounts, all of those things. Um, I think I think the move up market is I mean, can you imagine? I mean, I get responses all the time. Hey, Mike, I got a two point eight percent on my first. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not going to I can't trade up when rates were five. Now they're six and a half, seven. Right. Jeez. Yeah. 
the move up yeah. market's dead. First time home buyers, we don't have any inventory. I mean, first time home buyer new product stock. I, this is this date is old. This is like six or eight week old. It used to be forty percent of builders' inventory. It's now seven or eight percent. We're just yeah. not building it. It's not profitable. No. You can't. I mean, so I went through that with a couple of developers and like, cause you know, we were looking at doing some development, um, small, small, small scale. Cause I want to learn a new skill, mm-hmm. you know, but small scale and the numbers that I'm seeing, they just, it's all about what yield you can get out of your land. Of course. And for us, whether I build a 900 square foot home or a 2000 square foot home to connect to the city sewer, water sewer, and the impact fee that I have to pay is identical. Oh, wow. It doesn't change. So I'm either spending 15,000 bucks to connect for a 900 square foot house that my rent is X Mm -hmm. or a 2000 square foot house where my rent is probably two X. Yeah, at least. Yeah, probably. And the cost is exactly the same. The land costs the same. The bring utilities to it costs the same. The impact fees cost the same. These all cost the same. Yeah. And so why wouldn't a builder's an idiot if yeah. they are building beginners starting housing? They're idiots. I just had somebody spend, you I don't want to put you on the spot, but take, so he had a lot, built a tiny home on it. Like 300 square foot tiny? Like home? 650. Okay. All right. So, so pretty tiny. It's pretty tiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 650, three okay. bedroom, 650. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's got like an interesting like loft on it on the top. It's uh, beautiful. They did an amazing job. But but 650 square feet, it took him seven months to build. Oh, geez. Okay. And guess what it cost? What state? New Hampshire. Uh, Maine. Maine. Maine, actually. Just but close to me, like within 15 minutes of my house. I'm going to go 225 grand. 255. Oh, my God. Mike, 650 or 635 square feet. It's like that's 350 a foot. Yeah. I'm trying to build one. I'm trying to build, you know, yeah. finally got the roof. I don't know. My freaking engineer finally. Heard about the plan. God damn. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. I'm hoping to build for significantly less than that. If I, if it costs me that much to build my ADU, I'm only building one. <laughs> I'm not well, building more well, than one. And see, that's the thing is we're trying to get into that process because we're always growing. We're yeah. always learning. We're always uh-huh. trying to do the next thing, another thing. Mm-hmm. But this is where, you know, when you're elite at the other stuff, you can start to add on those other pieces. But yeah, as a core competency, like I'm looking at some of these numbers, but when people sit there and say, yeah, there needs to be more affordable housing built, be a builder, put yeah, yourself that's in cute to say. <laughs> yeah, it's super, like, what a great idea. I'm sure no one's ever thought of that. The problem is, is the cities won't give you density. Nope. And the hookup fees are all exactly the same. They're not based on the square foot of the house or the property. Yeah. So if I have a two acre lot, there's one town that I do business with in that they only allow two acre lots. Okay. Two acres. That's 90,000 square feet of land. Mm. Could you ever put anything less than a 3000 square foot home on that and make money? Oh no. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. So that's the way it's going to be. So that's why buying entry level housing or the, I like to buy the step before they buy that house. Mm. I like to get the duplex or the triplex that has townhome style or large units Mm -hmm. that allow them to say, Hey, you know what? This can be our home for three or four years. We're not sacrificing that much, but when we make that move, we'll go into our own single family. Yeah. I like that. So I guess uh, kind of wrapping this up, what do you think uh, goes on in the housing market? If we did six point, I think we did 6.1 million existing home sales last year. Take a wild guess where we may end the year up, given that rates are going up and they could be going up from here. What, what kind of what kind of transaction count are you thinking? Half. Wow. Like three, one, three, four, maybe wow. something like that. Like I think it gets, I think it gets really slow. Like we might see a quick pop, but I'm I'm encouraged by that pop yeah. because that means after that pop's done, it's silence. Crickets. The only people moving are the ones that have to move. Yeah. And that's where you create opportunities. And again, the, the beauty about the half the moves in the slower market is, is that's where terms come in. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's, again, oh, yeah. you could get, you can overpay, you can pay list is if I get terms, my 50, 40, tens or whatever we're going to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm super excited. So again, yeah, I don't know if it goes, I don't know, man, I think it eventually gets to that number. I don't know. If, Cause again, I'm using the calendar year. So 
yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's good. It is, it, it's going to get slow. It is. It is. Going. And the funny thing is, is like, there still isn't enough of the right inventory, right? Talk to Target and Walmart about that. It's all, yeah, the right, yeah. There's it, not the right inventory. It's like people, oh, inventory is growing massively. Yeah, in the wrong segment. Exactly. People, we're going to say, well, that's actually an excellent point. We're going to have to start to segment this, right? Because theoretically, yeah. very simplistically, there's kind of starter homes, move up homes, luxury. We're going to see inventory grow, but you're right. I think it's going to be very much ballooned in the last two. Very much. So if you happen to be lucky enough to be fishing in those ponds, congratulations, you're going to get a oh, deal. Deal? I mean, Mike, they are going to get a massive deal. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But if you're in the lower end the first time, there's just nothing. We're all competing for the same stuff. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, Matt, where can people find you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and Instagram and my live stream on Sundays, 1130 a.m. Eastern time for three hours of fun. Awesome, buddy. Thanks again. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm.